Hey, welcome to the very final exercise of this short course on numerical analysis. This final topic is about hyperbolic partial differential equations. The example of hyperbolic equation is wave equation introduced by Lombard in 1940s when he was studying the water waves. So let me play some of the YouTube's animation to make a better sense of what it's gonna look like. Imagine these are the waves of an ocean and how they interface either constructively or destructively and to each other. The hyperbolic equation can give you two important information about these waves. One is the velocity and second is the position or distance of that particle from the origin axis at any given time. Notice at any given time. So if we know the distance of a particle, it means we also know the amplitude of that wave and the velocity with which it travels. There can be one more example, is a wave in a string moving up and down. Now let's go through an example. You see the format of the equation with some given information, such as the range, initial condition, boundary condition, and one thing more, function for the velocity and differential form, which will help us to find the velocity at any given time. So using central divided difference formula to obtain the running equation A, Now there are two cases to make use of the given velocity information. See the equation for case 1 and case 2. You can use any one of these. This is how to discretize and apply initial condition and boundary conditions. X is changing as we move from left to right and the change in velocity with respect to time is we moving from bottom to top. So before we use the governing equation, we have to find U11 through either case 1 or case 2. I will be using case 2. Here lambda is equal to alpha times k divided by h, where alpha equal to 1, k is equal to h. So I will lambda equal to 1.
the bottom row can be find out from given initial condition. You can use calculator for this. Now once we know the bottom row, which is the initial condition, then we find the second row by using given velocity conditions and differential form. Let me write all these points in the second row. After knowing the first two rows, in other words, the first two initial conditions, then we turn towards the governing equation until now it was just the preliminary requirement. The actual solution starts now. Ah, so silly, make me crazy, but hey, just hold on. So again, title these points that you need to use in order to find any given point. Let me show you in the machine. For if I want to find the velocity at node 12, I need to know node 1 at the bottom right, node 11 at the bottom, node 21 at the bottom left, node 10 at the most bottom, and so on. So thinking in this way, in fact, accelerate and optimize your time when it's too short and most needed sitting in the examination hall that's the hilly and the bumpy way it is. And to do all this, never mind your calculator, make sure you have changed its lubrication and it's running properly before sitting in the examination room because it's going to decide your grading prospect, but not yours prospect. Let me press one last thing upon you before I leave is that no matter how well you do in your examination and grading, this never makes you a good engineer, maybe a good scientist. But that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. If you have time to comment, please do it down there. I would love to read it and response. Goodbye and good luck.